dug fur area. And what I did is, I'm not a mushroom. I'm not even a beginner, I'm a sub-beginner. I'm just a photographer. So for, for me to know and make this trip worth it, I had to first download images of what a Douglas tr uh, fir tree looked like, what a eucalyptus tree looked like, and what a pine tree looked like, uh, and what a redwood tree looked like. I mean, that may sound pretty basic, but I want to be sure so that when I'm out here hiking around and I'm in a clump of trees, I know if I'm wasting my time or not looking for mushrooms and stuff under like a redwood tree where they don't grow. So I want to be able to identify the tree that I'm by so that I can identify the kind of mushroom that potentially grows or maybe growing there. And so that's what I'm doing. This is Doug fir tree. Is all these cool rascals growing out of the side of this tree. This looks to be a by the bark let me get out and look at my pictures because I'm like I say this is real basic but it's the way I'm going to approach it because I don't know and this looks like Doug fir and the mushrooms it says that typically grow in Doug fir boletes chanterelles uh, so this gives me a, a reference to look at when I get back where I have cell phone signal and see just what kind of mushrooms these might be but for now I don't care what kind they are I just want to photograph them I'm going to show you guys my setup here in a minute and uh, what I think I want to go with in this case is one of these little Zome uh, small tripods that I've got here and just for now so I'm not laying my camera in the dirt uh, I'm going to set it up on here I'm going to end up changing this lens I think I want to go with, I've got a 100 millimeter macro, but I'm not going to jump right to a macro because I want to fill the frame, but I want to fill the frame not with just a part of the subject, but with the whole mushroom. So in order to do that, I think I'm going to use a 200 millimeter 2.8 with extension tubes. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to uh, fill the frame, stand back from the mushroom, fill the frame, and give it some good compression and make it look really nice and large bring some emphasis to it uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put an extension tube on before I put my 200 millimeter lens on <clears throat> and judged on the side of those mushrooms and how far away I'm going to be uh, I'm thinking I'm going to use they come in three sizes I'll link these in my description down below and I've also got them in other videos that I do toy photography with I think we're going to go ahead and run with the uh, the biggest size which is the 36 and I'll put this on my EF adapter and then I'll put my 200 millimeter on there and we'll be ready to go shoot here. And just real quick, I want to brush my lens and make sure that it's clean before I start okay don't want to get started with a, something on my lens last time I was shooting mushrooms it was raining out and I don't want any water spots or anything on there I do have some hustle or uh Zeiss lens wipes, but I don't want to use those right now. So, same thing with the back. We can just brush it out. I've got a bulb blower also. A little rocket air blaster uh, that I can do the back element with. And I just want to get started. I don't want to drive out here all this way. Get back home and realize I should have cleaned my lens. So we just do that in the beginning so that I can eliminate that from my mind of potential things to go wrong. Because <laughs> when I'm doing it, there's potential for things going wrong. Okay, now we're good. Everything is where it should be.
nothing's loose and outside of the bag. We can get over here and go ahead and set up. There we go. Get a focus lock on there. I'm seeing where it F or at ISO 100. So let me go over here and adjust my ISO. I don't want to be at that. I want to be down here. At, we can do 400. I think we'll be fine with that. ISO 400. Then we're going to set this on a 10 second timer to give everything a chance to quit shaking. Lock focus. Turn my deal on here. So if we're looking at the camera's metering system, it's saying right now that for a proper ambient exposure with no flash, this is going to call for a two second timer. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and let that get a proper exposure just using the camera's metering system with the ambient light. I'm not going to move. It's going to take the picture and we're going to look at the picture histogram and we're going to see, yeah, it is a proper exposure based on what the histogram looks like and we're going to scroll through it and we've got some good light, okay. Now this is the second part of the trick that that I really want to show how it brings out some separation. We know that two seconds is the proper exposure length. I want to underexpose it now on purpose. We're going to go from two to one tenth. I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> See how dark this becomes. Okay, it's a little darker than I want. <laughs> it's okay, we're not shooting film. So let's go down here to a third. One more time. <laughs> And I'm not moving so that I can be sure that I don't get any any camera shake in there. Okay, that's a decent starting point. So we'll turn on the camera, my flash. My trigger is on. It's a little bit hot. So what I'll, Oh, see, because it did auto ISO. This thing, sometimes it does auto ISO. God, I hate that. No wonder. I'm like, what is the matter with this? I don't know why it'll switch to auto ISO on occasion by itself. I just... It's irritating. So let's take the shot again because it shouldn't be that bright. There we go. That should be a good one. Yeah, and it is. Let's zoom in on that and take a look. I'm like, what is going on with this thing, man? Bear with me, guys. Sometimes the camera does a funky thing, and I just don't know why. I know what it does, so I can fix it, but I don't know why it does it. You know, it, it'll do that auto ISO from time to time, and I really can't stand that. Okay, so what I want to look at is the main front of this cap here. I like the way that looks. It's a good-looking picture. Really quickly in three easy steps, folks, here it is. Step one, I get as close to a properly exposed image as I can using only the camera's metering system. Step two, I speed up the shutter by however much my preference is in order to intentionally underexpose the image of step two. Step three, I aim the flash and click the shutter. This gives me the separation and nice lighting you see in the final image of step three. I'll show you some more examples. What we're going to do is I'm going to rotate the screen out so you guys can hopefully see. And I've got a little leaf in here causing me some distraction. What we'll do is I will take um, uh, maybe a little bit of... green or something to put behind the, the mushroom uh, just something that I can take and add a little bit of 
background to it for when the flash hits it and I get a little separation. I've got some sort of color going on behind that looks nice. Something for it to pop, uh, not just get lost in the background, but let's take a look and see what this looks like. I think that's going to be nice. Wake the camera up. Yeah, see, it's a big difference in the way that looks. Okay. So, we're going to get my focus moved to right there. Okay. And actually, I'm going to change my focus from the zoned to the spot because I don't want it to focus on anything except that main front part of the cap toward me. Um, zone focusing is good for expanded AF zones. I mean, it's good for like birds and stuff, but for this, I want it to focus on exactly where I want it to focus on. And so, now, we're at F16. Let's get, using the camera's metering system, I'm going to spin the dial until it's in the middle, and it's calling for a 10-second timer. At F16, 10-second timer at ISO 400. Let's take a shot like that and see what that looks like. It's going to be a pretty shot. Here it goes. That's nice. Honestly, I think 10 seconds is a little bit much uh, because I've got some blinkies. So I think we're going to go, I mean, we're going to underexpose it now on purpose anyway. So let's go up here to a five second shot and just take one more test. That's going to underexpose it <clears throat> by about a half a stop. And let's see what happens with those blinkies. I just don't want blinkies because I'm going to be introducing flash in here and the sun's coming up too, so it's changing a little bit. <laughs> Let's bring that up. I like that, man. That looks nice. So we've got a good base exposure. Now I'm going to speed that up. We're going to intentionally underexpose it in the next stop, uh, in the next shot. So we're going to go from five seconds uh, and we're going to speed that up and we're going to go to... one second we're going to get a test exposure and we're going to see that I've underexposed it enough to where if I shoot it with the flash I'm going to get some good separation there's the shot it's a lot darker we've got some nice natural ambient highlights on there which is nice uh, so and I think I'm at a good place with that so let's go ahead and do the next part of this now which is Introducing the flash. Okay. Okay. So now, let's make sure that I'm... Let's give this a whirl. I'd like to get a little bit underside of the... And I don't want to block it. I don't want anything to be in front of the flash to cast a shadow on the mushroom. Let's take a look at that. Ooh. That's nice looking. It's a little bit dark, so what I'm going to do is bump my flash up, and instead of touching the camera, I'm just going to do it from the back of the flash because it's going to be, I don't want to bump focus on the camera or anything. We've still got focus where we want it. The green light shows me that. Let's get down here, aim it at the mushroom. Oh, that's really, really pretty, man. Gosh, dang it. 224 is really nice. I like that. So, once again, we have three steps. The first one is you get a properly exposed image using the camera's metering system. Step two, you underexpose that. Step three, you use the same settings in step two. You just add the flash. Follow along with me in this next example as I take a really cool picture of this little tiny colorful uh, mushroom here using flash but with a little bit different technique. It's fun. Follow along with me and I think you'll like it. There's something. I don't know what that is but those are mushrooms. Look at those. Oh, 
all down in here. Let's see what we can find. Okay, we're gonna put this 100 millimeter macro on here. And we're not gonna use an extension tube with this, it's not necessary. Um, so that lightens up the, the camera a little bit. Now, since I haven't used the 100 millimeter macro out here today, we're gonna, and I used it the other day doing mushrooms in the rain. I'm just gonna blow some dust out of the back, make sure the back element is nice and clean. Camera's facing down so nothing can fall in it. Put that on there, take that off. Then we're going to blow the front element off. Put this back in its bag because I lose more cap lenses front and back than I know what to do with, it seems like at times. Okay, now, rotate my lens hood around on a small mushroom like this, this lens hood may actually get in the way, but we're going to find out. Let's see, what I need to do here, we're kind of in the embankment, so I want to have like this, like this. get my stability from the back back here okay then I'll rotate my camera around I'd like to get a little bit lower than that okay now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna level this whole head out with the bubble level in here there we go okay now let's take a look and see what we got focus I think yeah let's get that into this little guy here I'll tell you what he is a tiny one I would like to get him though he's playing peekaboo with me so let's level this out again I level it out just so at least one thing in the setup is level. Uh, I can always rotate a little bit and post, but I, I don't want to start with everything all <laughs> cattywampus. I got IS on right here. IS on. Let's turn IS off. Thought I heard something weird. <laughs> that was, I'm like, what is that noise? Image stabilization. You don't want that on when you're using a tripod. Now, I'm going to move my focus right there. Uh, this is nice because you can drag and focus where you want it. I don't like touching the back of the screen too often because my hands are a little old and rough and I don't want to take a chance of scratching my screen. But Okay, and we're at F18 on this. I think that's a little... much let's let's landscape let's do one thing at a time let's go ahead and clear the clear the view of the the model all the toy photography I do I keep thinking I hear Jason in the woods <laughs> good hole going here if we can see him pull one thing down and 45 things come down okay take those little rascals off of him there okay put a little moss back in the scene there where it was I don't do as good a job as nature, but 
That looks pretty nice. Actually, this is going to go from sharp to blur because the focus plane is at an angle. And I don't want that, so let's get it flat in there. There we go. Okay, I think we're getting where we want to be. Okay, we got focus locked on there. Let's get an ambient. I don't want ISO 1600. If you turn your back for a minute and you bump something, you have to really pay attention because the EOS R, it'll change things on you. And uh, so ISO 400, and it's calling for um, to get a the camera's metering system. Wow, it's beyond 30. Oh, there it goes. Okay, uh, so it's calling for 13 seconds. Let's just take a look and see what that does. <laughs> Listen to the water for a minute. It's beautiful. Here comes 13. Oh, my flash fired. <laughs> Didn't turn it off. It's all right. <laughs> it's beautiful here, man. This place is really pretty. Okay, let's take a look at this exposure. Histogram. It shows that the histogram is to the left, which means that it's dark, but there's a lot more, it just means that there's a lot more dark in the scene than there is light. There is light recorded from the light part of the mushroom, but there is a lot of dark in the scene, but it's a properly exposed image. Uh, so this is what we'll do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and it's calling for a thirteenth of a second. Uh, I could add to this image uh, pretty much is... I can add a little lighting in here, just some directional lighting to maybe bring out some texture. And I think the other thing that I would do maybe is just put a little bit of uh, moisture on the mushroom just for some reflection. 13, it was 13 seconds. Four, eight, twelve. That's going to be three. So let's go right in there and do that again. My mistake. I forgot to. Okay. That's going to soak up the ambient light for the rest of the exposure. And let's take a look and see what this actually looks like. See the the reflection in there from adding the water. That really did help it and my lighting really did help isolate the background by just skimming the front of the focal plane that where I have the, the focus and that was really nice. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you were able to take away a little bit of useful knowledge uh, that you might be able to use in some of your wild mushroom uh, photography. You know, and, and I just want to stress the fact that you don't have to have the equipment that I have. It's just when it boils down to it, it's a light I mean, it's a flash, a tripod, and a, and a camera, and a lens. So, you know, it's about how you use that equipment out there in the field and, and how it can benefit your uh, wild mushroom photography. And, you know, uh, if you haven't done so, like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at insightful underscore imagery. Uh, look me up on Facebook, also insightfulimagery.com. You can get a list of the gear that I used in this video. And if you find it useful, you can purchase some of it using the Amazon links.